<laughs> All right. All right. You, you got a business? Okay. Uh, you got to look. We'll give you a. I'm not picking it. You're picking it. All right. We are now drawing the winner of this illustrious tablet. You must be in the room to win it. Yvonne Chen. <laughs> Let's go, Yvonne. Everyone give a round of applause for Yvonne. Come on up and get your prize, Yvonne. Limited edition seven inch tablet, front and rear camera, selfies, and pictures of other people. Jeff Bezos. That tablet paid partially for Jeff Bezos' trip to outer space. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys, we are back with another company presentation. Uh, this time from Tweedleaf, uh, we have the president, Welby Evangelista. Welby, come on stage. Hello. Give it up for Welby. Come on. What are you doing? I know it's the end of the day. All right. Thank you. Hi, uh, Welby Evangelista with uh, North Star Holdings. Uh, our dispensary brand is Tweedleaf. Super stoked to be here. Uh, it's the first conference I've been to, like all of us, for at least two years. Uh, we've been doing this for a year and a half, so very appreciative of the fact that I get to present in person to, uh, to all y'all. Anyway, we want to introduce today uh, North Star Holdings, uh, specifically Tweedleaf, our brand in Colorado. Uh, our story is really simple. In 2013, my partner and CEO and founder, uh, created and built New View Pharma at the time in 2013. It was the largest uh, vertically integrated uh, facility in Colorado. And two years later, he set off on his own and built the first Tweed Leaf uh, in 2015 uh, medical location in Colorado Springs. Uh, today, uh, we're opening up our 10th location in Colorado Springs and are in, also in the process of acquiring six additional locations, which will put our footprint at 19 locations, or rather 19 licenses in uh, 16 locations. Uh, we serve both the medical and adult use uh, patient base. Uh, we started in medical, it's uh, true and dear to our hearts, and we have set off to uh, offer the adult use uh, market as well, and uh, starting with uh, our location in Trinidad and extending out into uh, Denver and Boulder. Uh, today, we are a vertically integrated enterprise. Uh, we feel strongly that in order for cannabis uh, companies to really flourish, that you have to um, have a full suite of products that you both grow, manufacture, and create in order to create that sustainability and consistency in delivering you know, your brand of product. And today, what we're doing is we are adding additional cultivation we're adding additional dispensaries and we're adding additional manufacturing, primarily in the state of Colorado and extending out into Nevada and California in the near term. Uh, just by the numbers, just to give you guys a real quick view, we have 13 dispensary licenses that are currently active in 10 locations all throughout Colorado. We have 100,000 square feet of indoor and greenhouse uh, facilities in, in, in the state as well as uh, one operator license, which allows us to really uh, get a head start in our acquisitions. It's one of eight, and what it does is it allows us to go into whether it's a cultivation, a manufacturing, or dispensary, and take our, over operations and, in essence, implement our um, you know implement our SOPs and bring in you know bring in our staff to start working on it while we're waiting for. Uh, our licenses to be transferred. We currently have two labs in kitchen where we, be, we, we, we do both volatile and non-volatile. We have our own line of um, edibles, tinctures, and topicals in, in, in addition to um, having all the dabs, wax, shatter, and distillate. So we really have three businesses under one uh, umbrella uh, that, as you all know, you know, all takes different types of skill sets. Uh, today, from a vertical integration standpoint, 90% of our sales in our dispensaries are uh, our in-house products. Uh, that includes locations in Boulder, Central City, Colorado Springs, Denver, and Trinidad. Now, the unique thing about our dispensaries is that there's really two dynamic markets in the state of Colorado. There is a medical market, which is in the Colorado Springs area of about 1 million people. And then there's an adult use market that's uh, in other places as well. Now, in Denver and other locales, you'll actually have two licenses in one location, giving you a two for one. 
In one door, you can have, you know, basically your medical patients, and on the other side, adult use, 18 years and older. So in our Colorado Springs location, um, we really, we really look at how we can sustain a good medical card holder model that we can then build out simply because unlike the adult use, this is a very captive audience because they're coming to your location if they assign you their plants or they assign you a card and become members of, of that particular facility. It provides you with really a growth, uh, a, a growth and, and uh, you know, retention model that you don't quite see in the adult use markets. In our cultivation, we have about 300 different genetics uh, in, our, in our library, of which we do about 30 to 40 on any given time that we rotate. And so the reason why we do that is that in, in our model, we really believe in creating products that our patients and customers will want and habituate to and continue buying. And so for us, you know, it's not necessarily trying to quote unquote own the customer, but rather provide something for the customer that they want to keep buying over and over again. And so we then drill down in these locations in terms of understanding what our patients and what our customers are really looking for, simply because in our medical model, we're talking about medication. And so we're true believers in that sense that our folks that are coming in on a daily basis or weekly or whatever that frequency is, they're looking for a particular product to basically go in and provide them with some form of relief, whether that's pain, PTSD, anxiety. These are folks, especially in the veteran community, that are always looking for that one particular product. So it's important for us to maintain a level of, uh, of potency, a level of quality, and a level of, of, of consistency in not just the products, but also the delivery of how we speak to our patients that are coming in there. We've translated some of that into our adult use market, which is a totally different animal altogether in the state of Colorado, in the sense that in that particular market, it's really about value. Uh, a lot of people like potency, a lot of people like terps. It's a, it's a whole grab bag of different things of why people buy adult use versus medical. And therefore, within that 300 genetic strains that we have, we rotate that. And the reason why we do is we look at our best performers in terms of you know what really does well in terms of of how they are received, not just by the market, but also from a yield perspective. So right now in all of our stores and dispensaries, we have over 30 strains that we continually have. And hopefully in the future, we'll increase that to about 50, which will give us one of, a, you know, in, in my opinion, a really good leg up. Beyond that, we also have 12 manufactured products. We make oils, carts, wax, shattered, live edibles and tinctures. Again, the reason why we make these products is our patients have asked for more concentrated products so they're not smoking as much flour. And really that's the, the, the genesis of produced products is that it came from an RSO environment where someone doesn't really want to smoke, but they want to have something else, a dab, an edible, a tincture that then can provide them relief. So in our medical side, which we take a lot of, um, a lot of information from, from an analytical perspective, we take, a, we take a look at what the patients are doing and we're taking a look at every single element and drill down to frequency, who that buyer is, their, the products that they're buying, the amount at any given time. And so the reason why we do that is we're in a very competitive state. There's you know, over 1,000 dispensaries in, uh, you know, in, a, in a population of 5.7 million. So it's important for us to really drill down and understand what our patients and customers are looking for because there are a lot of choices. Unlike other places like here in New York, right? there's not a dispensary in sight. In Colorado, especially in Denver, there's a dispensary within one and a half or two miles of each other that our patients and our customers have the ability to go to on any given time and then find the best deal of the best products that they're looking for. So speaking of products, we have 10 branded products as well. X-Leaf, Canadu, Star Rocks, and Power Flower are three categories where X-Leaf is our manufactured goods, our oils, tinctures, uh, rather our oils, our, uh, our wax and shatter. Canadu's is our, um, that's our edible line. Star Rocks are our infused pre-rolls and Power Flowers, a value uh, pre-packaged product that we sell uh, in our adult use locations. Other unique thing about us is uh, we have one patent um, that basically allows us to use blockchain to track and trace cannabis products uh, from seed all the way to sale. Uh, that includes uh, a validation of the strain, the testing, and all those other uh, elements that will we believe in the future will be critical for interstate. So today we have that patent that we're going to execute at some point, but right now our focus is to really grow our primary business. 
And finally, we, uh, we applied for seven research licenses that the DEA uh, had uh, issued out uh, back in December or November of last year, and we're currently awaiting. We believe that with the seven licenses that we've applied for the DEA cultivation, that allows our location to potentially be a federally approved uh, site that the DEA can then uh, uh, get, or get products from to, for distribution into pharma, uh, you know, research uh, institutions, et cetera. So right now, here are our stores. Um, as you can see, they are very simple. In Colorado, uh, our primary model there is to really go in, find a, uh, an asset that we believe is a good buy, and from there, what we do is we come in and we remodel it. So unlike other locations, uh, whether it's limited license state, California, and beyond, there's really a, a wide swath of dispensary assets that are available for us for acquisition that allows us to go into an existing market or rather an existing uh, location and turn it over. Because in Colorado, the key to success is really understanding the local neighborhood where your store is at. If you understand the dynamics and what people are buying there and you put in great SOPs, in addition to the great SOPs, individual bud tenders, managers, et cetera, that can execute on an SOP and combine that with good consistent product quality, those customers will come back. So oftentimes we'll go into a location, a location that might be underperforming or there's some sort of like operator fatigue. We come in, we take a look at the market, we take a look at what's been driven there before and if it's a great relocation, we typically buy assets for about 0.75 to 1x revenue, which allows us then the lift to be able to get that to double or triple in revenue at some point. So for us, we love Colorado. There's $2.5 billion in sales that will happen this year. Every month, we sell $200 million worth of product. So we don't really need to go away from home. We need to just go down the street and talk to or look at a dispensary where there might be an operator who's done doing, uh, you know, doing what it is that they're doing and they just want to retire. So that's where we come in. We negotiate, we take a look at that opportunity and then from there we take it over and then we consolidate that. We implement our system, we bring in our products to get that lift. And so really today, what we're doing as an enterprise, aside from two locations, every single one of these locations were acquisitions and some of them like our Denver number nine and the Colorado Springs number 10. These are locations where we have picked up an old license and remodeled in this particular case, a village in and are now putting in that particular license. So for us, it's about pragmatism and being smart and uh, creating shareholder value by really coming in and not overpaying for anything. And so speaking of overpaying, we built this entire enter enterprise for under $7 million in paid in borrowed capital. And so the joke I would say is like, you know, some dispensaries are being sold for $21 million for one location. I say to them, if someone gave me $21 million, we'd probably have 30 of these locations all throughout Colorado from Fort Collins all the way down to Trinidad. So once again, the reason why we are so intimate is because we are owner operators. On a daily basis, I work in a dispensary, I work in the cultivation, I work in the manufacturing lab. The reason my partner and CEO, John, is not here is because we're in the process of acquiring six additional new dispensaries that right now require his attention to really make sure that that whole transaction is not only being completed, but also that the, that the actual transition from that brand to our brand is smooth uh, and that we'll be able to like really take over that one particular asset and then and make sure that there's now no, no bumps in the road. So, you know, in essence, you know, like from... Again, the cultivation side, uh, you know, we have, like I said, five different locations. This is just, you know, pictures. I call it uh, basically my ladies. <laughs> so these are all takeovers. Uh, the outdoor, uh, the, the 100 acres in Ordway, that's something that we started last year. So we're going through our second cycle of crops. And I'll tell you, I really, my hat's off to people that do outdoor cultivation because it's probably the hardest cultivation that we've ever done because we deal with all the elements. Whereas a 45,000 square foot indoor in Denver, you know, where we control all the elements and we're able to then produce a consistent quality. The, the outdoor one, you know, is probably one of the hardest things that we've done. And then be, and in addition to that, we also have 45,000 square feet of Trinidad, uh, up in Trinidad of greenhouse. So we really go through the whole expanse of cultivation and we have the ability to understand the challenges and the benefits of each. And from a benefit perspective, 
just for you know for guidance and indoor growth usually costing us about a buck ten for a gram uh, greenhouse you're gonna clip at about 75 to 85 cents depending on on how much and in outdoor which we really just blast and turn into concentrates and biomass for um, our production facility you're looking at you know 25 to 45 cents depending on the kind of yield that you get because Colorado is very very challenging when when it comes to outdoor uh, it's you know literally a, a desert so from this perspective really um, these are both adult use and medical and again a unique thing about Colorado is we're a plant count state so we're limited in the amount of product that we can push out of any square feet of facility that we have so we maximize every single location by tearing up in, in those plant counts. And so in essence, that then makes us and forces us to really hone in on the value of every plant. So unlike other folks, we really look at the per gram pickup of every plant. It's not by light, it's not by square footage, right? We look at what we're getting out of that one plant. And our goal is always 300 grams and above, and that's dry weight. Right. Some folks will say, oh, I can get six pounds, eight pounds, a light, et cetera. For us, a light really doesn't mean anything because we have to tag and, and look at and track every plant. And so that's going to then be extrapolated to what is our return on investment for this one plant that we started six months ago. And so because we're in that particular dynamic, we are forced to be very disciplined in our approach on how we invest the dollars that we have on any given item. And so if I'm planting a plant and it's only giving me 100 you know, grams and it's selling, but it's selling and it's super popular, we have to weigh like, what does that popularity mean in terms of the return on investment on that 100 gram versus doing a bushy OG Kush that's you know, over or a blue dream that's gonna give you 300 plus grams every time because it's a different genetic, right? So this is just an example of one of the things that we have to deal with in a very limited plant count state a very competitive environment is that we have to refine what we do down to the nitty gritty details of what it is. Because unlike limited license states, like I said, I'm competing with seven other dispensaries in my downtown area, not two or three for the whole entire county. And so because of that, we have been able to really take a look at how we spend money, how we spend our time and how we invest that. And we believe that we have created a real good program that we're able to then repeat it over and over again. Um, continuing on, just to give you an idea again of our cultivation locations and kind of our capacity. Uh, right now, we have the ability to do about 720 pounds on a weekly basis. Um, what this tells you is that, like I said, this is the number of plants that we have currently. And the thing about plant count and why it's important in our state is that you just can't all of a sudden go from tier one to tier five. In Colorado, you have to earn your tiers. And so when we're picking up cultivation, we have to take a look at that and then dial it back into our uh, dispensaries of how much can that dispensary sell on a monthly basis and what is being sold at that location. And so when we look at that from a mathematical perspective, that's really what the, you know, part of, of what, what we take a look at. So when we look at other states like California where it's open canopy, unlimited plant count, right? We have different metrics that we deal with on that particular case. Now, moving on, you know, because I'm short on time here, here's just four of our brands. Our Tweed Leaf Dispensaries is our primary brand in both adult use and medical. Canadus is our edibles and consumable. Power Flower is our affo affordable uh, prepack. X Leaf Labs, oils and concentrates, Star Rocks and Carolinas are pre-rolled, infused, and topicals. And another neat thing about Colorado is we're deli style meaning that our customers and our patients get to pick the buds that they want at any given time. So really for us, a prepack or a brand really is all about the product itself. A prepackaged brand in Colorado only works when there's a big push for that particular brand and there's already a reputation because Colorado is one of the most mature market, most educated, um, you know, our, our patients and our consumers know what they like and they knew they know really good products so what i tell everyone and there's always a lot of bragging about who grows the best in my opinion colorado gives you the biggest high because we're super mountain high so that's it <laughs> any questions yes sir we would love to be in new york city <laughs> uh yeah uh new york city is uh 
a target today. We have uh, applications in in New Jersey. Uh, we're uh, hoping that you know some of those turn out. We're partners with uh, a few folks there. And so our goal is to really enter the New York and New Jersey market. We don't stray away far from home, but when we do, we make sure that it's very far away and it's in a $15 billion potential market, which we believe that this particular area is. Today, I'm pretty sure like New York is probably a $4 billion, uh, we'll call it, you know, alternative market. Um, but we believe that from a green market perspective that the whole region is going to be a $10 to $15 billion market. Okay. All right. Thank you, Welby. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Give it up for Welby, yep. North Star Holdings, and Tweedleaf.